Good afternoon, City of Refuge. Thanks for joining me today for this week's update as we uh, finish up our weekend and then look forward to next week, Holy Week, um, as we talk about all the things that we have planned and all the opportunities for fellowship with each other as well as fellowship with the body of Christ. So first of all, uh, last week we joined, we jumped into April. This week we have opening day for baseball. So I had to wear my Yankees jersey even though they're losing to the Red Sox right now. So whenever you watch this, you don't need to uh, remind me that today has not gone the way we Yankee fans hope that it would go. But there's a lot going on this weekend that I want to share with you. First of all, tonight we have our next Brothers in Fellowship Men's Ministry Gathering. Every The second Friday of every month we join together at 6.30. And um, this year we're just having a time of testimony where we are sharing our stories of how God has met us so that we can encourage each other, but also so that we can know each other, to know how God has worked and is working in our lives. And so tonight at 6.30, we'd love to have any men join us. David Cohen will be sharing the story of how God has worked in his life. We'll gather together for, for dinner together, um, to share God's word together and fellowship with each other. Um, and then usually we have at least a little bit of dessert before we leave. So uh, again, 6.30 tonight, the Mengis are our host. If you need any information, you can reach out to PJ Jackson, to David Mengi, or you can reach out to me and we'll get you directions or any information that you might need. And then tomorrow, Saturday, April the 9th at 5.30, we have our weekly gathering where we come together to encourage and build each other up with singing, with intercession, gathering around God's word, and just joining our hearts together in fellowship. This week, we will be continuing our Jesus Said series. While we'll be talking about the Passover, the preparation for the Passover in Luke chapter 22, and then Jesus' emotion, his deep desire to eat that Passover with his friends. We're going to talk about what that means, uh, what it meant then, and what it continues to mean for us now. Also, tomorrow night, Paul Shellhart will be giving us an update on the progress and the plans for our building on Broad Street as we prepare for the next uh, uh, work day, which is next Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. So Paul will be giving us an update on what we have done, what needs to be done, and what the plan is for next Saturday. So we'd love to have you join us in person here at Grace Alliance Chapel. If you can't be here in person, um, the service will be live streamed on both Facebook and on YouTube. Now, there is one difference for this week. There is not going to be a replay of the service on Sunday morning. So usually we replay the service. If you can't be with us Saturday, you can just find the service on YouTube or on Facebook and watch it later. But on Sunday morning, we're not going to do the replay because this week at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, I'm going to just be doing a live broadcast both on Facebook and YouTube to finish up our 40 days of guided prayer through Seek God for the City. I really did not want this to just end with a whimper, but us to be able to join together on Palm Sunday and rejoice at how we have prayed and the work that God has done and the work that we know God is going to do. So if you're available Sunday morning, we'd love to have you pull out your phone, uh, take a look, join us uh, just for 15 or 20 minutes as we pray together and share the goodness of God together on Sunday morning. Then that is going to lead us into next week. Uh, next week there is a lot on our plate, but there are such good things that I pray that you'll be able to join us for as many as possible. First Wednesday night it will be our bi-weekly prayer meeting. That will be on Zoom. L listen, there's a lot happening right now. Even just today. I've gotten calls and texts and emails about new diagnosis, about hospital visits, even about deaths. And so there's a lot on our plates. There's a lot on your hearts. So Wednesday night, we are going to join together for an hour on Zoom to pray with each other, to lift, up, to lift up each other's arms, to remind each other of the goodness of God, to pray God's word, God's strength, and God's spirit over each other. And so if you'd like to join us, if you have a prayer request, send it to us. But if you'd like to and you're able to join us, just make sure we have your email address and we will send you the link for that Zoom meeting. Again, that's Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Then that leads us into Good Friday. So on Good Friday, we'll be joining together here with Grace Alliance Chapel as we've done for the last, I think this will be our at least our fourth year of doing this together. 6.30 Friday night, we'll come together for an hour, 6.30 to 7.30, where we will worship, where we will pray, and where we'll take communion together. This is our opportunity um, not to mourn the cross, but to celebrate the finished work of the cross. The reality that Jesus died once for all. He doesn't die again, and we don't have to put him back. 
because he has accomplished everything that he came to do. And so we will come together and we will sing and we will rejoice and we will remember that the work of the cross has been accomplished and we are now the people of God because of the blood that Jesus shed. And then Saturday night, this year the calendar works out perfectly for us. As this year, Passover falls on the Saturday night before Easter. And so this year, we're going to celebrate both of those days together. So we'll be having our usual Saturday night service. But Grace is going to be joining us for this service where Pastor Mike and I will be sharing the message. And then we will again, as, as one body, separate congregations, or I should say different congregations, not separate, but one body joining together to partake of the Lord's Supper. Um, we believe that this is really going to be a special opportunity and a special time of fellowship as we focus on the newness of life that has been provided by the finished work of Christ, but also the eternal resurrection. That Jesus didn't just resurrect then and resurrect again and again. He is resurrected once and for all, just as he died for once and for all. So that means that we now can live every moment of every day in resurrection power and in the newness of life. And so, again, would love to have you join us next Saturday night at 5.30. Child care will be provided. Um, Grace will be bringing some of the, or some of Grace's volunteers will be stepping up to help with child care. Would love to have volunteers to help us with as greeters um, and to help us with the communion elements, to help us with child care if you're available. So reach out to me if you're willing to serve. We want to be a blessing because we know that this is a great opportunity for us to join our hearts together. Now, next Sunday, we'll go back to our usual schedule, meaning next Sunday, that service, that Passover Easter service, will be replayed on YouTube and on Facebook. So if you can't join us, we do want to make sure that you have an Easter service that you can share with your family on Sunday morning. Finally, next Sunday morning, Easter Sunday, we will be joining with several other congregations in Burlington for the Burlington City Sunrise Service. That's at 7 o'clock in the morning at the Riverfront Promenade. And uh, I believe Melissa and part of the team will be leading, will be leading some of the singing. Um, there will be a special message from the new pastor at Christ Baptist Church. And this is always just an opportunity to join together, not just with our community, but in our community. And so we'd love to have you join us Easter Sunday, 7 o'clock at the Riverfront Promenade. So those are all the announcements. I'm sure you'll be hearing more about them from our Facebook page. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me. One last thought that I just want to leave you with, especially as we move into this Holy Week, as we move into remembering and celebrating the death and the resurrection of Christ. Yesterday in our reading plan, we read Isaiah 55, which is this incredible prophetic passage, uh, passage about the coming Messiah, about Jesus about who he was and who he is and who he will always be. But the thing that struck me the most were the first three verses. It begins this way, and they may be familiar to many of you. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what, is not, what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. In the first three verses, God says come five different times. The God who pursues us never stops inviting us to join him. The God who has chased us, overtakes us, but then he invites us to join in, revelation, in, in relationship with him. In fact, if you're in Christ today, it's only because he invited you to come. If you're in Christ today, it is only because he came for us, made himself known to us, and then invited us to come sit with him at his table. You are loved and pursued and desired, but maybe more than anything else, you are invited. And so I want to encourage you today, let's join the work of God 
Let's be those who desire that all would be saved just like he does, who will that none would perish just like he does. And let's be those who are making the announcement, that are making the invitation, because we've been given that authority by his spirit and by his word. And so now God is inviting us to invite others to come join him at his table. And so not, let's not just be those who show up, let's be those who bring a guest, who bring our children and their children, who bring our neighbors and even our enemies. May everything about our lives shout out, be reconciled to God. But may it shout out in a way that loves so much that it would say, come. Come sit with me. Come join my father. Come join our family. Come and be adopted by the heart of and the love of God. You hear me say often that the Psalms tell us that the redeemed of the Lord should say so. I believe we say so by joining the work of redemption. And so I will again want to encourage you today. May we be those who look at the hearts and look at the eyes of those who live around us. And may everything in us, instead of being offended by what we see, may we be moved by what we know. And may we join the invitation to invite all to come. And finally today, if you're watching this and you feel far away, if you're watching this and you feel like somehow you've wandered off or somehow you've been forgotten, I want to share with you the one word that God is speaking over your life right now. Come. You're welcome. You're wanted. And a seat has been saved. There is nothing keeping us from Jesus because he's done all the work to bring us to his Father. And so finally, I'll just invite you to come. God bless you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I look forward to seeing the men tonight, to seeing you at, at, as we worship together tomorrow night, and to just watching to see what God has planned to do in and through our lives. Have a great weekend.